Father, we thank you once again this day. Thank you, Almighty God, first and foremost for the gift of life. We stand this moment because your grace sustains us. And we never take it for granted, Lord. Thank you for all the battles you fight for us. Thank you, Father, for shielding us and protecting us from all evil day after day. To you be all the glory. Thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of salvation. Thank you that once upon a time, you allowed your grace, your mercy to look out for us and to locate us. And Father, you enable us by the Holy Spirit to respond to the message of salvation. That's why your word says, we did not choose you, but you chose us. Thank you for choosing us through the mercy of salvation. We are grateful. People of God, everyone, if you are born again, just thank God for the gift of life, for the gift of salvation. These are great things God does for us. Yes, we thank you, Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit whom you have sent to us to be your presence residing in us. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you, Almighty God, for the good plans you have for us. Thank God for the good plans he has for you. We give you praise, Almighty God, that no matter what challenges we may face, the Bible says what God has purposed, who can change? You've got good plans for us. And Father, because you are faithful, we remain confident that we shall see the goodness of the Lord. In the remainder of our years, you shall lead us from victory to victory. We give you praise. And Father, we say thank you for this day. We say this is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. And Father, as your children, we want to thank you once again for the new month. People of God, lift up your hands and just thank God that you are inside another new month of the Lord. The month of June. Say, Father, thank you for carrying me through the whole of May. Thank you, Father, for ensuring that I sail through successfully through the month of May, regardless of whatever challenges I may have faced. But what matters is that you saw to it that I successfully sailed through. And Father, we want to thank you for this new month of June. And Father, we declare that we are beginning this month in the name of the Lord, depending on our help of the Holy Spirit. We say, Father, even in this month, lead us, guide us, show us the way. Yes, continue to fill us with more and more wisdom. Continue, Father, to keep us under the influence of your Holy Spirit. Continue, Father, to navigate us, help us navigate using principles and keys from the Word of God. And Father, help us, Almighty God, to do even better this month. And I pray for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, and all families in this church. And I pray for the church of God in this country. Father, help every Christian, everyone in this church to continue strong even in this month. Let no one backslide. Not Let no one blunder. Let no one fail. Father, I pray, strengthen each and every one of your people with power in the inner man by the Holy Spirit. And Father, keep everyone moving forward strong right through this month of June in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that you anoint us with a fresh anointing of the month of June. People of God, lift up your hands. May God anoint you afresh. Say, Father, anoint me afresh. Revive me. Strengthen me. Galvanize me. Fortify me by the Holy Spirit of mercy. Holy Spirit, lift up a standard. Holy Spirit, guide us. Yeah, tell him, guide me, Holy Spirit, every day, every week of this month, from its beginning to its end, in the name of Jesus. Keep our lives, keep the lives of your people under your control. May your influence be the overriding influence right through this month. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Take your seats. Hallelujah. How are you in the new month of June?
turn to the person next to you say, I bless you with the June blessings of the Lord. May the good Lord of heaven favor you this June in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. May the good Lord of heaven favor you this June. Amen. Let's get to the business of today. Thank you for coming. I'm going to be obviously speaking about, you know, taking charge through prayer. Amen. Taking charge through prayer. We are going to read James chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. The power of prayer. Amen. What are, we, what are we discussing? The power or the results of prayer. Praise the name of the Lord. NIV 1, 2, 3, 4, read. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Let me just explain that first portion of, the, of, of that verse. If you want to carry God's favor, be a person who cares about other human beings. Full stop. Many Christians are suffering because they are Christians for themselves. What does it say? Confess your sins to each other. It means avoid wronging people deliberately. Your prayers won't work if you are a people destroyer. If you do wrong things towards other people willy-nilly. Amen. The second aspect there, pray for each other so that you may be healed. Let's paraphrase. Pray for other people so that you walk in continuous favor of God. Hallelujah. It's a science of this kingdom. Jesus sits on the right hand of the Father. The Bible says he lives to intercede for us. That's why he's a celebrity of the whole world. If you want to be elevated in life, be a helper of humanity. Did you get that statement? What destroys the black Christian, the African Christian, is selfishness. Tell your neighbor, rest assured from today, I will pray for you. Yes. Give God every reason to keep you alive for longer. Because you are a blessing on earth, you are not a trouble. That's a big statement. Did you hear what I've just said? So pray for each other that you may be healed. So I'm not focused about being healed. I say so that you may walk in God's favor. Let's move to the next line. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and what? And effective. Now we're going to read this in another rendition, which is the Amplified. But before we get there, because we are in the month of prayer, this month of June, I want you to learn it as a new habit. Pray for all your relatives every day. Pray for the people you work with every day. Among human beings, you will stand out because you live a life of being a priest, one who represents people before God. God says, I'm looking for a man who will stand in the gap. May he find you. Yes. Say, Lord, you will find me. He says, if I don't find a person standing in the gap for others, destruction will come on them. So by prayer, you become a protector of other human beings. Write it down. You find that a relative of yours was going to be in a nasty accident. But because you prayed for that relative in the morning, they escaped the accident. Let's emulate Jesus, our commander-in-chief. He lives to intercede for us. Hallelujah. I pray that this June we learn it as a new habit, as a new culture. Don't live for you. Tell your neighbor, please stop living for yourself. You exist for bigger purpose than that. Hallelujah. Are you learning something? Praise the name of the... Now let's go to that big one, Amplified, that has amplified everything. One, two, three, four, read. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. Powerful powerful. Look at Job chapter uh, 42 verse 10 now quick because of that word restored. Look at Job 42 10. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Tell your neighbor if you fail to pray for me losing continues. 
Mm. Tell your neighbor now, say, if you fail to pray for me and continue with your pride, losing continues. You apply for a job, you fail. You try to get money, you fail. Tell your neighbor, I'm your key. Look at your neighbor, say, I'm your key. You pray for me, your things will flow. I like this. Ah, 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 ah. Look at it in the New Living Translation. This is powerful. One, two, three, four, read. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Praying for yourself will cost you too much. Pray for us and you will keep on rising. Who is receiving that revelation? Lift up your and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this information. From this day going forward, I will cease, I will stop, I will avoid to be selfish. Instead, I'll be selfless. I will care about other people. I will carry them in my prayers. I will mention them every day when I pray in the name of Jesus. And by so doing, I will benefit the promise of restoration and gaining continuously in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go back to uh, James. Powerful. Have you learned something? Tell your neighbor, rest assured, I'll pray for you. I don't want to lose. Amen. Let's continue. The heartfelt. We start the highlight, that one. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, can accomplish much when put into action and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Powerful. Look at 17. Let's look at the case scenario of this man called Elijah. One, two, three, go. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, with the same physical, mental, and spiritual limitations and shortcomings. Pause. Because we tend to think that these people of the Bible days, like Elijah, who brought down fire from heaven, they were different from us. They were just like us. They slept when it was sleeping time. They had weaknesses. Hallelujah. Let's read the last part highlighted. And he did what? And he prayed intensely. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. A human being shut rain. The whole of the Middle East Palestine, there was no rain for how many years? Three years and six months. Think about it. Just learning from the writings of this servant of God, James. Prayer has power. Write it down. To shut things you don't like in your life. If there are things that become a disturbance continuously to your life, there's a system, there's a science, there's a mechanism of heaven that you can apply to shut those things. Amen. And to strengthen this point, I saw it in the words of Jesus in Matthew 16. I think it's verse number 18. He said, whatsoever you bind on earth, shall be what? Shall be bound in heaven. Please listen to this. A human being has been given by God power to decide what should happen on earth and what should not happen. And the system by which we decide is called prayer. Did you write that point? Am I communicating? You carry power, each and every one of us, for deciding, veto power, for deciding what should happen on earth and what should not happen. And that power is activated or unleashed through the act of what? Of prayer. Second point. Prayer is not an option for a Christian. It is a necessity. That's why Luke chapter 18, verse 
one, the Bible says Jesus began to tell them a parable to the effect that people always ought to pray. He spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and never lose heart. So to validate this statement I've just made that for the human being, for the Christian in particular, prayer is not an option but it is a must. We go back to the writings of Paul to the church of Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 5, I'm sure it's verse number 17, it says, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse number 17. It's there. One short verse, three words verse. Pray without ceasing. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, please, I'm begging you, pray. It's not a justice opinion. It's in your Bible. Jesus said it. Paul says it. To show me and you how crucial it is. Pray without ceasing. Simply put, write it down. The same way you never get tired of eating. La prahashana masaka. Never get tired of praying. That one must go into your notes. I will wait for you on this one. The same way you never get tired of eating Mrs. Food and Mr. Food. Never get tired of prayer. Eating maintains your stomach and your physical body. Prayer maintains you spiritually. Both of them are vital. The same way you will never complain about eating every day. I've never met someone saying, you know, Apostle, please, have met. I'm tired. This thing of eating, I'm just tired. I'm still waiting for that history to happen. Where you meet someone complaining that something needs to be done. This eating, I'm tired. So the same way you never get tired of eating food for your stomach, never get tired of praying to maintain yourself spiritually. Did you learn something? Yes. Point number three or four. I don't know how you are writing your notes. Prayer secures for the Christian the backup of heaven and the presence of God. Did you write that? What did I say? Prayer secures for me and for you the backup of heaven and the presence of God. Or the anointing if you like. If you want God's power to keep on working in your life and working on your behalf. The only activator for such benefits is prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go on your knees, God responds to your needs. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hello. What did I just say now? When you go on your knees in prayer, God responds to your needs. I repeat it. When you go on your knees in prayer, God responds to your needs. When you go on your knees in prayer, God arises to respond to your needs. Psalm chapter 50 verse number 15 valid, validates this point I've just made now. He says, call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. When you go on your knees in prayer, God responds to your needs. The next point. 
Prayer is the only spiritual act that authorizes God to intervene in human affairs. This is big. Prayer is the only spiritual biblical act that legalizes and authorizes God to intervene in human affairs. Prayer is the only legal biblical spiritual act that legalizes and authorizes God to do what? To intervene in human affairs. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter, you know, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 13 and 14, paraphrased or shortened, God says in verse 13, if trouble erupts on earth, there are locusts or economic disasters erupting or sickness plaguing the people. In verse 7, it says, if my people who are called by my name, if is a disclaimer. It means God will not act though you are in trouble until you license him through prayer. Are we communicating? Because many people think life is a game of chance. You just wait. Things may go okay. No. You've got to be intentional. You must know what to do. Prayer activates heaven on your behalf. Uh, 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 uh. What did I just say? Prayer does what? It engages, activates what? Heaven on your behalf. He says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek or solicit my attention, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and do what? And heal their land. It means prayer activates or engages God to come to your aid whenever you are in need. Say thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Are you still in the house? Next point. Prayer enables God to fulfill all the good plans he has for you. Prayer enables God because God never does anything for a human being without the cooperation, the participation of that human being. So prayer engages God. Prayer enables God. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know, O Shalina Masuka, the plans I have for you. It is plans to do what? To prosper you. Plans to give you a good future. Plans to give you hope. To deliver you or to save you or preserve you from being harmed. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. It is plans to do what? To prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a good future. So this is God just speaking. Then he now prescribes what you need to do. Because I've just told you, he does nothing without your participation. Look at verse, 30, verse 12. He says, then, you see, that's your part now. As God, I've got good plans, but I'm waiting for you to play your part. He says, then you will call on me. For the plans, for me, God, to fulfill the plans, I'm waiting for you to call on me. And come to pray to me, and I will listen to you. Look at verse 13. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart. That's why you are cutting the meat out. 
So that this time you remember why you are, eat, you are not eating meat. This season you remember, oh, I'm supposed to call on God. It's something that will keep you focused. Because meat is very big in these days. Finger licking good. Hello in the house. Are we all here? <laughs> Amen. Look at verse 14. My God. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back from captivity. Let's end there. It means when you engage in prayer faithfully, diligently, continuously, God blocks setbacks. Are we talking in the house? It's a paraphrase. We are making it relevant to today. These people God was speaking to were locked in bondage in Babylon. Write the statement down as a, just as a bonus. Prayer makes restoration possible. Almost every human being has suffered some setbacks, some losses. Are you understanding? Even lost opportunities. By prayer, engaging in it faithfully, diligently, you can engage, you can cause the restoration of good things in your life. Can you say amen? And another amen. A stronger amen. And a life amen. In the name of Jesus. Prayer enables God to fulfill all the good plans he has for you. Hallelujah. God will not do it without you. So when you pray, you partner with God and God does what him alone is able to do. Hallelujah. The next point, prayer blocks or stops the devil who comes to kill, steal, and destroy from carrying out his evil plans against your life, against your family, against your marriage, against your children, against your job, against your finances. Prayer is a blocker. If we shorten it, it is a blocker of evil. Are you hearing me? It is what? It is a blocker of evil intentions by the devil or by people that are used by the devil to rise up against you. Point in case or case scenario, it's Acts chapter 12. That king by the name of Herod took James, the apostle of Jesus, the one who wrote the epistle of James, killed him. Then he took Peter. These were the pillars, the leaders of the church in that time threw him in prison wanting to kill him the following Tuesday so Peter was arrested on Thursday night or Thursday during the day afternoon because it was the Passover week and Herod said let the Passover of the Jews pass but Tuesday I'm killing this guy and the Bible says after Herod took Peter threw him in prison constant prayer La Pazata, verse 5 and 6 constant what? prayer was offered by the church. My God, constant prayer was offered by the church to God for him. Here's a shocker. When the church was not praying, James was killed. If we are not praying, the devil will kill the good things God is sending our way. Prayerlessness gives the devil an opportunity to destroy your destiny. A life of prayerlessness is a dangerous life. Lift up here and say, oh Lord, as I'm learning these things, ignite my prayer passion. Fill me with a prayer grace. Help me to pray. Move me to pray. So constant prayer was offered by the church for who? For Peter. While Peter was in, in, in prison, he, as a matter of fact, he was sleeping. He was so dejected, so, so discouraged, so disgruntled that the men were sleeping. But the church offered not prayer, but what? constant prayer. Write it as a point. Make sure you live a life of praying constantly to keep your life shielded, protected from evil attacks. So because
because of this constant prayer, to cut the long story short, an angel was dispatched from heaven, went to the prison, broke the prison, took off the chains from Peter. Peter was guarded by 16 soldiers, four regiments, 16 of them, four, 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 four. The angel liberated him from all four. They never even saw him leave. Those soldiers were all killed by the king. The king said, you are joking. 16 of you, all of you, you are telling me nonsense. You never saw the guy. Kill them. If you become a man and a woman of prayer, you will be a walking wonder. People will wonder how you escaped. Am I talking to somebody this morning? Lift up your and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, may this be my culture. May this be my practice and discipline. May I be a man and a woman of prayer in Jesus' name. Pray, pray, pray right there. Lambroha. This is serious. Limbro kapazatabayana. Later. The stakes are high. If we want our lives to be shielded and protected by God, if we want God to keep on performing the good plans he has for us, we've got no choice but to engage in the act of prayer. Lando Castilanda Masaka pray. Zela Basaka Babaya. Lembro Hashana Masaka. Lepra Hashana Masaka. Say, Father, help me to put aside my pride. Help me to put aside self reliance. Help me to put aside, oh my God, my arrogance. Help me to humble myself and become a person of prayer so that, Father, your good plans for my life. Life may be fulfilled in my lifetime. In the name of Jesus, rise to your feet. We are almost done now. I want you to pray. I want you to just, you know, digest the things you've been hearing as I'm just about to release you. Say, Father, I don't want to just be a hearer. I want to be a doer. Lando Castellana Masaka. Look at James chapter 122. My God, it's no use. I speak all these things. You write them down and you never arise to act on them. Oh my God, it says, be doers of the word of God and not hearers only. Everything I was telling you is word-based. It is the word of God. It says, be doers of the word. Lift up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, may I be a doer, a practicer, a practitioner of the things I learned this morning. They are so important for my destiny, important for my family, important for my career, for my job. It is important for my protection hey, oh my God in this world of many evils say father help me to rise and engage in prayer Zina lina masakabaya oh shalina masakabaya father we praise you father we glorify you help us by the Holy Spirit help us by the Holy Ghost help us by the spirit of the living God Zina lina masakababaya oh shapakata Bayanta Masaka, Lembro Hashana Masaka Baya, Lembra Hashana Masaka. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, I want you to take this as a takeaway to help you as you begin to engage into the prayer and the fasting. These are the things you need to take home. Zechariah 4 6, write it down. Prayer is not possible only by human, human effort. Prayer is difficult for the human mind and the human body. It's a divine thing. Zechariah 4 says, 4, 6 says, it's not by might, nor by power, but it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. The things of God can never be successfully executed without engaging the Holy Spirit. So now, beginning now and every day from today, each day you say, Holy Spirit, say Holy Spirit. It's never by might, nor by power. Say my own efforts will fail. My own efforts are limited. Say, Father, I pray, release your fresh anointing, fresh unction from the Holy Spirit to pray. Say, Holy Spirit, hear a man 
I, I am willing, my spirit is willing, though my mind and my body is not willing. That's why I ask you, move me to pray, move me to fast, remove from me the appetite for food and replace it with appetite for prayer beginning from this week in the name of Jesus. Say, Holy Spirit, anoint me with the prayer grace. Say, Holy Spirit, pour upon me the grace of fasting, the grace of prayer, the grace of supplication. Pray, 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 pray. Would you pray through me, pray with me, pray by me. Captivate me in prayer. Capture me in the spirit of prayer. Like the Bible says about John that he was in the spirit. May I be in the spirit of prayer this week. In the name of Jesus Christ my Lord. Yes Lord help us. Yes Lord help us. Yes Lord help us. I want to see every mouth praying. This is very important. Everyone submit yourself to the Holy Spirit. It's never by might nor by power. Lift up your hands and say Holy Spirit I submit yourself to you concerning this matter of prayer. It is urgent. I need to do it. I cannot avoid it. I cannot dodge it. I cannot re I cannot, oh my God, avoid it or dodge it. I need to engage in it or to secure my future and my destiny. Holy Spirit of the living God, we submit ourselves to you. Our flesh is weak. Our flesh don't like praying. Our minds re resist prayer. There are so many distractions. Put us in the prayer mode by your grace, by your power. Lambro Hashana Masaka. Say, Holy Spirit, deliver me from distractions. Deliver me, Holy Spirit, from every distraction. Deliver me, Holy Spirit, from all disturbances. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, help me to pray. Lift up your right hand. Say, Holy Spirit, I appeal to you, my helper. Help me to pray. My life is at stake. My destiny is at stake. Prayer is what will protect my life and my destiny, my family, my future. Help me to pray. Father, baptize all your people with the prayer grace this morning. Baptize all of us with the prayer grace. Let the zone leaders mobilize their people to pray. Let's all encourage one, one another to pray. Lord, help us to pray. May we not dodge this summons, this commissioning. May we all engage, Lord. We even dedicate, Lord, the Zoom corporate prayer that will happen 9 a.m. in the 9 p.m. in the evening, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Holy Spirit, be the driver, be the commander in chief. Yes, be the mobilizer, be the helper. Even in that exercise that we've never done before, we commit it unto you, Lord. And Father, grant us success for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.